So today we're going to look at how to create the phospholipid bilayer uh, in Maya using MASH. So the, the lipid bilayer, uh, it's th the thin membrane that around the cell, it's made up of these paired uh, sheets of lipids that meet in the middle here at the lipid tails, and you've got the lipid heads on either side. Um, we're going to use MASH to make this. So MASH has made this a much easier process than it was in the past, at least to make, you know, a little section of it like this. Uh, I used to do this using particles with the end particle instancer and to make it wave and react to forces um, would sometimes use end cloth as an invisible sort of deformer for these things too. It was a little tricky to set up, but actually MASH has made this much easier. So, um, so this is what we're going to be creating uh, in MASH in Maya. Uh, we're going to use a simple object as the um, as the mash objects that mash object that will be repeated. Let me just show you. So it's just a single sphere, and I just have one curve that goes inside the sphere and comes out the other side to make the two lipid tails. And this is just a renderable curve. You can make this any way you want. This this is not really part of the whole uh, experience here. I'll remake this again though in just a second. So let me hide this mash node and we'll get started again. So just like any mash object. Oh, actually, one last thing. Um, it's also, we're going to look at how to animate it as well. Let's deselect that. So you can see there's some deformation on here. And this is all built into MASH. So this isn't dynamic. This is just using a signal node. Anyway, um, let's get back into it. So we want to whoops, um, create a sphere. And this will be our lipid head. So let's just call this our lipid head. I'm going to delete its history and freeze its transformations. I probably don't need something quite this this much resolution but anyway this this will do and then just from the front view I'll create a curve and with Arnold now that we can render curves uh, this is one way to approach it we don't have to necessarily do it this way you can actually model out these you can do uh, a number of different things so let's just call these lipid tails and if we go into the shape node of the curve, we can turn on render curve, just scroll down a bit, and the mode that we want is probably thick, so it'll look sort of like a noodle. Um, and then the curve shader, so let's just make a shader here. Uh, we'll use Arnold standard surface, and I'll just give it a slightly different color than my other one, so I can tell them apart, kind of make an orange sort of surface here. And I'll keep specularity on for now. And then uh, I'll apply the same material to the head here. And so we should, I've got a light in the scene already, so we should be able to just render it. Yep, that looks good. Uh, the curve, though, is a little too skinny. So the curve width is, make it 10 times. There, that's good. So now we've got the lipid head and the lipid tail. So I'm just going to group these two things, command G, or sorry, control G on the PC. And I'll call this, uh, I'll call this new lipid because I already have one. And we'll make a mash network. So under the effects menu set or under animation, I guess, create mash network and we'll use an instancer because uh, the repro mesh is just heavier. There might be reasons to use a repro mesh, but uh, we don't need to do it. So. There are different ways that we could do this. We could just make it as a grid, right? So if we um, if we select our second mash node, well, the demonstration one here, you know, I could tighten up this grid and you know, you know, repeat it and actually make lipid bilayer just using the grid uh, distribution method, but it has these sort of large gaps in there, and I'd like to offset these so there's a sphere sitting in here, and there's just a bit of offset between them. So a better way to approach this is to use the linear 
setup. And so let's make 20 points. So now they're all crammed in with within 20 units and this um, sphere has a radius of one unit, so a diameter of two units. So we're just, we can make this 40 or maybe slightly under 40 so they stick together a little more closely, maybe something like that. We can always go back and change it later on. So now the next thing we want to do is to use the replicate node. So I'll just open the mash editor here. You can see the layout uh, of the previous one that I have here, but we're going to recreate it. So we've got our, let's rename this mash. So we'll call this demo mash. So now we can create a replicator by clicking on the button here or in the mash editor in this drop down. So the replicator will replicate whatever you have up to this point. Uh, by default, it's always a little confusing, but the replicants is set to zero. So if we just set this to one, then you can see it's offsetting the position in Z, negative two units, which actually works well for us. So we're gonna build out our uh, lipid bilayer sheet in this direction, but it's still giving us this big gap we want to offset this. So that's where in the replicator we can turn to the pattern options. So what this does is you can set a pattern that will repeat every uh, set number of replicants. So right now every two replicants will assume this pattern. I've got nothing in here yet but in our case we may want to offset in X. So you can see what's happening there. So it's just offsetting. So now this sphere is sitting in the crook here. And now that I've done that, I might want to offset my position in Z, get them a little bit closer. Yeah, so something like that. I can even tighten them up a little bit. These aren't dynamic objects, so they're not going to bump into each other. I'll just give it a nice clean number here. And my offset in X is one. So these are the only two things I'm, I'm changing here. So at the top of the replicate, well, three things. So the replicants at this point is one. Offset position Z is negative 1.5. That gives us these two um, rows. And then I have pattern set to two, which is the default. So this will repeat every two. And then I just offset it one in X. You know, so that's doing this. I could do it negative one, I could do positive one or whatever. And now that we've got the pattern set up, as we turn up the replicants, as we go to three, now that pattern is repeated, right? So that's pretty good, that's pretty easy. We get that nice kind of honeycomb pattern. And you can see that all of my uh, lipid tails are completely lined up. If I want to add some randomness to this, I can add a random node. So if we go back over here to the mash editor and add a random node. So by default, the random is set to position in X, Y, and Z. So adding one unit. So that's why it's all kind of messed up. I just want to add it to rotation. So I'll turn these down to zero and then rotation Y, you know, I can do 180 degrees and then we'll get sort of a random distribution of that sort of stuff. Could randomize scale if we wanted to, but the lipid bilayer is a uniform thing in that sense. I mean, at least the way we illustrate it. I'm not sure how uniform it is in real life, but anyway. Um, so we've made the first layer of our bilayer, as the name implies. We need two layers, right? So now what we can do is add another replication node, so another replicator. So because it's coming after all this stuff, this whole setup will be replicated. So this whole sheet will be replicated. So if I turn the replicants to one, you can see they're being offset negative two in Z. That's not what we want in this case. We want to uh, flip it and slide it underneath. So I'm not sure exactly which of the numbers are to do this. So I'll put it back zero in Z. So there is a replicant here, but it's sitting exactly on top of our other one. So let's just experiment here. So let's, okay, let's offset the position. Is that what we want? No. I think let's rotate it. So let's rotate in Z. Yeah. Okay, so we rotate 180 degrees. Let's push it down in Y. Is this what we want? Yeah. 
just want these tails to kind of line up. So, oh, got it right on. So, and now offset it in X. So I'll pull the slider over. It doesn't go far enough. Slider has limits by default, but as you type in new numbers, it changes the range of the slider. So 40 is too much now. So just slide it back into place. Get it. There we go. Right? Pretty easy. I'm going to save my file because, you know. Now, if I just go into the Arnold render view, let's take a look. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So now the last thing that we might want to do is to add a signal node. Now I have to say that I've done this a few times and sometimes for some reason the signal doesn't take uh, in that it will show up but it won't animate and I'm not sure exactly why. Hopefully it will work in this case. So if we just look back at the mash waiter for a second. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Um, we have the signal node, which adds some randomness, but it is an animated noise. So it's a random noise. Well, it's a noise defined by certain uh, procedural um, mathematics, but it's animated. And then we also have random here, which works in a similar way uh, without the same kind of noise settings, but it's not animated. So in our case, let's add signal noise. So it makes it all crazy. That's with a 4D noise. So if we play it, let's see, will we get animation? Yeah. Okay. So it's working. So it's working on all of them separately. If we turn off enable step, then you can see it's like the noise is passing through the whole thing as a unit, which is kind of more of what we want. Now this is maybe too fast, so we can turn our time scale down really low and maybe our noise scale just to give it more of a subtle wave. Maybe that's too little. Okay, so that's working. Maybe it's still a little too subtle. All right, so the whole thing is kind of waving along. Going to add something nice to an animation. You can turn this way down if you want it to be really subtle. Now the whole thing is kind of moving up and down. You can see it passing through the grid. So it's a large noise that's passing through the whole thing. There are other noise settings here, so you can change the number of octaves, so the sort of number of repeats of the noise within the noise to get something a little bit different, like this, which is kind of interesting. Persistence, I don't know what that does, actually. Well, nothing good. Um, but there are different noises, so maybe fractional Brownian motion is the most appropriate for something like this at the molecular scale. I'm going to turn up the noise scale a bit. One thing I have noticed, so this is looking pretty good where the two layers are sort of sticking together. But sometimes if you have the noise scale up really high, I mean, that's too crazy, but uh, time scale, let's turn the time scale down a bit. Let's turn the octaves down. You know, sometimes you can see that the bottom and top aren't really moving together, which is, they should be um, kind of stuck together. You don't really want that too much. And I don't know a good way to solve that. Maybe somebody else does. Whoops. Um, but usually what I do is just turn down the noise scale to get something a little more subtle. And with the bigger noise, it's sort of it will pass through all the objects that are close to each other in a similar sort of way. So you do still get some of this, that the, the top layer and the bottom layer are moving a little bit independently. But it still, I think, works well enough like this. So I don't know how so this has been 15 minutes or so, but uh, the great thing about doing something like this as well is if you model this, then you've got a lipid bilayer you can pull into any scene. And if you're a medical animator, you know that uh, this comes up all the time. There are other things we could probably put other like transmem transmembrane proteins in here. Um, we can maybe look at doing something like that later. You can do a protein raft probably. You could push through here. I don't know how to do that but I'm sure there's a way. Um, if you want to move the whole thing around the scene you can add a transform node and once you create a transform node you can type in 
different values in its transformations. Or the easier way to do it really is to add a controller null. So controller null, if you just right click in the field here and create one, it will create it at the origin, but there is, you can just grab this locator now and move your lipid bilayer wherever you want. And you could put this on a sphere too, I, I bet. Like if you used a, a mesh distribution, probably. I haven't tried that, but if you wanted to have it arcing, there are probably other ways of doing that. Um, but the really great thing about mesh too is that if I'm working on this and I realize, well, I've created it, but it actually needs to be much longer, or much wider, I can just go back into, oh, my cat is attacking. Um, I can go into uh, the original distribution node and let's say I can double this and double the distance to um, 72. And then I can go into my original replicator node, can turn that up, right? Now those offsets in the second replicator node have to be fixed a bit because we've just got more of these things. So that's not a big deal. Uh, so let's 80, 72. Maybe it's going to match that number exactly. It's pretty close. Um, 73. There, that's good. Probably a way to calculate that. Um, the offset here is fine, but everything else is good. Right, so I'm going to save my scene. Who knows what will cause Maya to crash? Anything really. That's pretty good, you know. And let's think if we... Okay, one other thing. Let's say with the signal node, we don't want it doing anything except in a certain area. Let, let's say, I don't know, a virus is passing over the surface and is, I don't, I don't know, it's trying to interact or a vacuole is going to emerge from below or something like that. We could use in the signal node, what could we use? A fall off object. So we'll create one. And so a fall off object lets you control where the effect of this uh, node will be felt. So the way the fall off node works is that it's fully felt in this small sphere and then it falls off to the edge of this big sphere. So I can double click on the fall off object, the fall off object. Oh, there it is. So sphere, or you can invert it so it happens outside, uh, outside the small sphere. Inner zone, we can make this a little bit bigger. And so now we can use this to have it just reacting in this area. And of course this can be animated. Let's see if I can do this without interactive playback. No. So let me just get interactive playback. A shortcut for it. Whoops. So interactive playback. You know, this can be animated through the whole thing to change where this is happening. So, you know, let's say you wanted to do like an action potential moving across the membrane, I don't know, of an axon or something like that. You could use one of these to do something just like that. Anyway, so this is, let me get rid of this thing. How do I turn it off? Mode. Cause I can just delete it. Let's just do a little render. Right, so in 10 minutes, you can get uh, a really nice looking animated, seemingly dynamic, but not uh, lipid bilayer made. So I hope you find this useful. Thanks.